Uh, there was a day that our director came to the Glee Club and I think half scared out of his mind and uh, not just because he didn't have material to fill the show but thinking about what he might get if he asked the Glee Club, uh, hey guys, we, we need to fill up some time in this concert. It's a two hour show and we've got an hour's worth of material and it's two weeks from now so if you can do something, come audition for me if you would please. So we got together to fill up time in that, and we've been together ever since. I don't know. That's really flattering. Uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm the guy who sees opportunities, uh, if, if that's what that means. Uh, from the first time that we sang in the, in the Glee Club and we had the chance to, to do another show, I was always the guy who would say, hey, okay guys, come on over here. We need to sing a song for this, you know, this group of people. And uh, I've always, you know, pushed us, I think, to, you know, to, to get the next show and to put ourselves in the right place to, uh, to keep on moving forward. Well, uh, I was in the band at Michigan State and outside the stadium one day, uh, my freshman year, you know, it's you know, beautiful, sunny September Saturday, and we marched to the stadium and outside the stadium, the band director says, okay, put them down, let's sing. We sang in the shadows in uh, the this, uh, this state alma mater. And uh, I was just struck by the sound of voices right there. And I said, this is what I want to do. So I joined the Glee Club the next semester. And I was in a musical group, a, a singing group, every semester uh, the whole time I was at college. Uh, just because of that, you know, that one moment magic moment outside of Spartan Stadium. Well, we're really in debt uh, quite a lot at this point, and so uh, we have to make money. <laughs> no, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a love of performance. There's something that happens up here on stage, not just for the audience, but for us, that is so good. It's, you know, it just feels so good. To, uh, to be singing and to have these, uh, these songs make people smile and make people laugh and you know, make people you know, feel really emotional. You know, there are a couple songs in the show now that are so powerful uh, and it's, uh, it's a thrill to, to be a part of making that happen for people. I think the strangest venue for what we were expecting was a small room at a country club where we were expecting to play for a couple hundred people and set up our PA system and everything and we walked in and it was the room was set for 20 people and it was really tight it was like performing in your bedroom uh, and so we uh, we didn't set up any sort of PA system but it was it was one of the uh, closest shows we've ever done they had a double door set up and we performed in the double doorway and did our whole show right there. It was it was really cool though. It was great. It was for uh, it was a Christmas show for a prosthetic clinic. I just want to keep on doing you know better and better shows all the time, and you know the venues continue to get better, and uh, we're we're reaching so many people right now. As long as that continues, that's, I think, the right path uh, to stay on. That's the path we're on right now. Uh, I think that we have a real opportunity right now to, to reach a m much wider audience than we have uh, with you know, our recordings and with video and things like that. Uh, but as far as uh, concert venues, I, I think they'll, they'll just continue to grow with us. And I, you know, it really seems like we're uh, going the right way. When I think of Glenn, what do I think of? Uh, I think of old cars. Uh, he, he's got six old cars in his driveway. And he, uh, you know, collects these old cars and works on them. And, you know, we don't know whether he's going to show up in the 54 or the 45 or the 68 or the... 27 or whatever and you know for Mark and I you know we, we don't know anything about the dual overhead cam cigarette lighters or anything like that so we, you know when he talks about the old cars you know, we're just kind of lost but 
it's great to see the enthusiasm that he that he has about it. The the big burly bear, uh, you know, so uh, you know, such a tough image, uh, and such a sweetheart, you know, such a such a nice guy, uh, that uh, you know. That looks like he's gonna, you know, like he says in the show, dude, I'm gonna rip your head off, you know, and you know, I, I don't. That's that's not him. I mean, he's uh, uh, be, behind this big guy. There's this, uh, you know, sweet guy that that wrote "It's You" and and uh, a thousand other great songs that you read the lyrics and you say, wow, these are, you know, these are really touching, and you, you don't. Uh, you don't necessarily see that at first. I see his girls. Anytime I see Mark, I, you know, being a father myself, I, you know, I think of his little girls and think of how much they mean to him and how much, how much fun we, we always have whenever we get together. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's great when, when our families travel with us. It's nice to have uh, his daughters and my, da my daughter and my son uh, with us and to have them play together, it's just super. The big goofy guy up on stage who just who gets away with just about anything, uh, half because I'm just silly and don't know any better. Uh, I, and uh, I don't know, I just like to have fun. Pizza. I like a lot of movies. Boy, I've, I've got like a top ten. It's kind of a revolving top ten. Movies come in, movies go out. Uh, there are some that stay in forever. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark 3, the Indiana Jones uh, thing. Uh, I, I, I could watch that movie again and again and again. I don't know why.